What's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Today, we got a special treat for you. I'm going to be interviewing the one and only Colin Shea, and we're going to be sharing his story, an inspirational one at that, when it comes to how he doubled his commissions in the slowest market of his 13 year plus career. How did he pull that off? If you've been struggling and on the struggle bus over the last year or two years, as rates have been going up, inventory has been going down, or maybe it's been so low, you don't even remember when it started being low, but you know that it's been a tough market. And you know that the wind's been in your face, not in your back. And a lot of mortgage pros have been getting chewed up and spat out. Over 25% of the industry has been purged over the last two years. You certainly don't want to be one of them. And there are an elite few who aren't just regressing, stagnating, or getting purged. There are an elite few that are taking market share. There are thriving thriving while everyone else is surviving or trying to survive. And Colin is one of those elite few. And we're going to share his story as to how he's doing it, his mindset, his marketing, his approach, and the difference that has made the difference for him in this challenging market. So Colin, thanks for hanging with me today, brother. Thank you, Doran. Awesome. Well, let's dive in. Let's uh, share a little bit about your background for those who don't know where you're located, how long you've been in the business, what inspired you to get in. Maybe we can start there. Uh, so I've been a broker for almost 15 years. Uh, I worked in the uh, for a lender for four or five years and then did something else for a bit and then started started a brokerage. Um, I started kind of partnered with, uh, with some real estate, with a real estate team, and then bought them out after five or six years and, and have just been on my own. Um, and uh, I'm in the Eastern Ontario area. now. Very cool. And what inspired you to get in? I'm curious. Was it just like, Hey, you know, I like money. I like real estate. Uh, why not? Or was there something? Uh, when I graduated there? from uh, university, I was living in Vancouver and uh, I interviewed for three or four jobs and I worked for a subprime mortgage lender and they, okay. I got to go to uh, um, San Diego for training. So that would made when you're 24 and you get a free trip to, uh, to, to uh, California for two weeks. You're like, yeah, I'll do that job. What else do you need to hear? Uh, right. And, yeah. I'll right. Uh, down and sinker. <laughs> so I got into their uh, management training program, which is really cool. I was like uh, one of two Canadians that, uh, that was in the program to start. Um, and uh, you got, it was, it was, it was a pretty awesome experience. And uh, I rode the uh, kind of, uh, mortgage wave from like that would have been 2004 or so to 2008 uh, wow. when uh, when everything everything fell apart. Uh, so it's a lot more than 13 years. I got my math wrong on your uh, career. Well, I did something else for a while, and and I've been a broker for for about. 13, 14 years. So, okay. So I got that part right, but you've, you've been incubating in the industry for quite some time, even prior to that, it sounds like. Yeah. So like, uh, in that program, you start as an underwriter. Um, and so probably underwrote, you know, a thousand deals in the span of a year and a bit and, wow. um, and, and so you kind of do all of the, all of the jobs. So you learn. So I, I had a good understanding of, how to put a deal together and all that sort of stuff. Yes. Yeah, so you have that to your advantage. Certainly no shortage of acumen, expertise, talent, and experience when it comes to understanding the mechanics of doing loans, finding a home for the loan, the problem solving, the mechanics and the technical side of the business. You've got that nailed, but people listening, watching know if they've been in the business for more than a day, especially in this market, that it takes more than the mechanics to thrive in this business, even to survive in this business. And so many, if not every mortgage pro out there has encountered that intimately, just that reality. So we're going to talk a little bit about what life was like prior to launching on Planet Prosper with us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com. You'd obviously been in the business for about 12 years on the broker side as a hundred percent commission mortgage broker. You eat what you kill with no safety net. Right. right. So, uh, you know, obviously there's lots of highs and lows and it's an adventure on the front lines of capitalism. No doubt. The uncertainty is real when you're, uh, you know, looking at the pipeline and it's looking rather anemic and wondering where that next deal is going to come from. Yep. And so as rates have gone up over the last couple of years, inventory very low in most, if not all locations and uh, margin compression, hyper competition, everyone and their dog chasing after the same realtors, 
not an easy thing to thread the needle on. So take us back about a year from now, a year ago, where were you at in terms of your business, your headspace? What was the, the deepest, darkest challenge you were going through at that season that inspired you to reach out for help? Well, I would start a little earlier first and say for the first five years, it took time, you know, a bit more on the marketing side. I actually did uh, some of your programs back then um, and then built up, a, you know, a pipeline and a, and a database of clients. And then for the next five years, it was when rates just are steadily going down. Uh, like I always say, like January 1st, I had 50 deals because I just did math and, uh, figured out who I could save money. And when you have a database, you know, from the previous year, like we're rolling over people every, you know, two, three years. So, so when you start off the year with 40, 50 deals, you know, you're, that, that's basically your salary, right? And yeah. then everything else you get is, so for a lot of that time, I wasn't really worried about marketing because I, when you start off the year with that, everything else you get is gravy. And that was all the money that right. I wanted to make. I was doing, doing well and it was pretty easy. Um, yeah, you uh, had certainty, right? You had a certain degree of certainty. January 1st, I just, you know, print out, print out a list, like to do a search through my database of, you know, people with a rate over X and then start doing math and send them yeah. some options. And there's, there's like a few months worth of work and deals right there. Right. So, yeah. um, and then uh, coming into this time last year, uh, you know, 2022 was okay um, through the first part of it. I was, but but coming into the fall of 2022, I just could see this cliff ahead of me, and not having uh, really much of a future pipeline, and you know, my my monthly income steadily going down, um, mm. and uh, and not and knowing that on January 1st there was nothing. Like, uh, there was no math to be done <laughs> mm. Especially because of COVID with rates being so low, every broker probably rolled over almost every client in their database. So all that stuff's gone for a long time, right? So your right. database, uh, uh, a broker that's been around for a long time, sure. There's a lot of people that have your phone number and, and, and know to call you and stuff like that. So you've got that benefit, but your database isn't really worth much as far as you reaching out very much because, everybody's got a better rate than what's available or, or you've already refied in the past couple of years. Right. Right. So, um, that anxiety started to, uh, really creep into my, to my world. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I decided to make the change and, uh, spoke to you and, and really take control of, of my business. But that was definitely a, a dark time and not a lot of sleep. And I, uh, was going through stuff in life too, that required me to, uh, to be making the same level of income at least. And, uh, right. so to kind of take the reins and take control. Yeah. That, that, uh, alignment with your expenses matching your income is a real thing. That proclivity, they call it, I think the Parkinson's law is one way it's framed where whatever level of resources we have, we tend to use it up and income is certainly no exception for most. And so a lot of mortgage brokers and loan officers have been caught with their pants down over the last couple of years where they were, you know, living in the gravy train for the last couple of years during the mortgage gold rush used to make an easy money, low hanging fruit. And all of a sudden the market shifts and they, maybe they were saving a bunch, but even when you save a bunch, it sucks to live off savings month after month after month like being in that financial hemorrhage that's yeah. anxiety inducing when you never like to go backwards mm -hmm. and for those who didn't save they're even more screwed those, even more screwed those are the people that had to leave the business earlier than most because they just didn't have much uh suspension to handle the the, the uh, bumpy roads of this turbulent market so here you are now you're in the spot where your income has dropped considerably and it's not just one month, but you're seeing it consistent. As you said, losing sleep, that's never fun. Waking up sleep deprived, haggard, dragging your butt through the day, not knowing how to get out of this muck and mire of financial regression. What was your deepest fear in that season, that dark season, as you call it, that you were most afraid of prior to coming to Planet Prosper? when you were just grappling in the dark and you didn't know how to tackle this problem and actually solve it, what was your deepest fear? 
<laughs> not knowing what else I could do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, when you've been doing this for as long as I have, it's hard to like even thinking about like, what else you could do, you know, like, yeah. um, I talking to agents of mine now that, that I talked to one of my agents a couple weeks ago that was saying like, he's thinking about getting a side hustle. And I'm like, well, dude, like this is, this is where you can make the most money. Don't waste your time doing something else. Like you just need to focus on, on this. Right. Um, but I just, um, I needed a new, uh, like a new plan and a new, a new plan of action and, and a new strategy. Cause, um, my strategy before was very, um, you know, kind of internal, right? Like, like it was just managing my own database and, and combing through those deals for, for, for new business. Obviously like I had realtors that, that were referring me business and all that sort of stuff, but, but not to this, not to the level that I needed to be, to be getting mm -hmm. consistent kind of outside referrals. So, so you'd hit the point of diminishing returns with your database because it's not that exciting to refinance your mortgage when the new rate is higher than the current rate. So that revenue stream dried up. Your existing partners weren't exactly top producers, or if you did have one or two, it was an anemic set of partners at best. And so whatever business they had because of the shift in the market, they were struggling as well. So that well was drying up in conjunction with your database. And so all that culminated into significant regression. How much had you regressed? And what was, I mean, obviously thinking about moving to another career was probably like the worst nightmare, worst case scenario. Um, but what were, what was your, uh, you know, obviously you have a family to feed, there's a lot of consequences to not providing a lot of consequences to not being able to cover the bills or having to start afresh in another career that you don't necessarily like that doesn't give you the same level of upside and freedom and income potential and fulfillment out of all those ramifications of suck, which one for you was pressing the hardest on you? Um, I, I just, uh, you know, like I, like I said, I don't, I don't know what else I would have, I would have, I would have done. Right. Like yeah. so I had to make the not knowing. Um, yeah. And I, you know, say to people like sleep is the most valuable currency. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so when you're, when that's part of your life is being affected, like, I don't like feeling like that. Right. Yeah. And I felt out of control really. Right. Mm. Like I'd felt in control of my business for a long time. Um, uh, and, and I felt out of control. Um, yeah. and, uh, so, uh, so just needed to figure out a way to like harness control so I can make this, you know, work for the, for the future until, until retirement, not just, you know, right. not just bail out. So, uh, and it's often the storms that reveal the weakness in the branches and the trunk and the roots. Yeah. And, and I, I saw it like it was fear, but it was also excitement. Cause I, I, I wasn't when, when your business kind of operates like it was before, like it was before, you're not as um, inspired to really to 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 try as hard to do to do these growth things when you're just like I said, it's almost easy like train. Your pipeline's a salad, right? So um, and and everything. So you can you can add little bits and 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 grow on top of that. But when you're getting mm -hmm. you know 40, 50 deals just from your own pipeline without making any phone calls. You know, that's, that's a lot of people's year right there. Right. And then obviously, yeah. you know, people in your pipeline and uh, move and need help or, or call you. But like when you don't have to really make a phone call to, to like yeah. any type of sales, uh, you know, uh, input, then it, it's a lot different. So, um, so that was a level of control that, that I had in, in the past iteration of this mortgage world, but in the current world of higher interest rates, that control went away. So. And as uh, entrepreneurial types that we are, you know, we wouldn't be on 100% commission if we didn't have a penchant for some degree of uh, autonomy, independence, control, freedom, right? Yeah. So that's why we're in the business. And when, when we lose 
one of the main reasons why we're in this business, which is control mm-hmm. and the ability to push the needle and, and drive the buggy where we want it to go. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that's definitely a strong source of soul suffering, no doubt. So here you are now trying to find solutions and tell me about the various things you tried before you joined us here on planet prosper. Obviously you tried opening up the faucet a little bit more with the database. It wasn't working. You hit the point of diminishing returns. Uh, what else did you try that had lackluster or perhaps underwhelming results that had you keep searching such that you found us? So, uh, I had, I had used your, uh, systems before in when I first started. So I, you know, knew that all oh, the dust off yeah. right <laughs> so, I wanted to, so so it was i was pretty quick to know i i started you know calling my my eight realtors and stuff that i normally get referrals from or ones that that i hadn't talked to in a little while like that sort of thing but i needed i knew i needed a strategy to go uh, you know and aggressively go after new agents because you know i, I needed the I'm a a person that really uh, like if if there's a if there's a script or a strategy or whatever I'll study it and then just do it right um, and I'm creative in some ways but in other ways I just want the um, you know I want the recipe right you're not a big fan of reinventing the wheel yeah right uh, you know, when, I'm, when I'm when I'm cooking in the kitchen I I follow a recipe I don't. Uh, I don't just start whipping things together and hope. Not like my wife, just intuitive, just, you know, creative culinary creativity. (laughs) I I, I like to follow follow a recipe. Sometimes if I've got the confidence, right, then then I I can get creative. But with, but, but if I'm making something new, it's gotta be, it's gotta follow a recipe. Gotta have that certainty. Yeah. So, so I pretty quickly was like, I want, I want a new strategy and and I want a plan. And uh, because I, um, you know, had success with your with your uh, stuff before i mean what i what what you were doing and, and what i was doing back then was is very different than than what my strategy was now right um with technology and stuff things have changed um so um and so yeah so there there was definitely a couple months of you know doing the generic sales move of just you know calling more realtors that i know but um uh but i you know, as, as much experience as I have, I wasn't really like hunting for new agents yet. Um, because I, I don't know, I, 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 I just didn't have the, I, I wouldn't say it was call the reluctance. What's that? Was it call reluctance? Like you didn't know yeah, what maybe. to do or what yeah. to say such that you just yeah. didn't want to take the risk. And I just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like the, Hey, I'm a, I'm a mortgage broker and I need business. I don't want to make <laughs> right. um, and, I, and that's, that's mostly the calls that they get. That's the calls that, that I get from different marketing companies and from insurance reps and stuff like that. So like, um, I didn't want to make, make that call. I am, you know, yeah. so, uh, so no matter, no matter how broke you get, you're not making that call, right? No, no. <laughs> you're not, you're not that desperate. Uh, and even when you get that desperate, there's a certain amount of dignity that a healthy ego will want you to maintain. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So you were in this paralysis by analysis, perhaps a little bit, just not knowing how to make that overture. You knew you needed to, but you didn't want to be the loan parasite, the mortgage parasite chasing. So what happened? How did you find us? So I, I mean, I'm still on your, uh, on your emails and stuff. So I uh, made the call, booked an appointment um, and, uh, and talked to uh, one of your salespeople about the, the setup. And I was just like, you know, I remember it. I was, I was in a dark place and I was like, yes, like this is, I'm going to spend the money and I'm going to do this thing because this is going to be like, I need the, um, I need the inspiration and I need to like, um, I need to take the leap, right. Um, in order to really find success. Right. Um, so, and it, and it, and it, and I, kind of knew that it had to be like all encompassing, you know? Um, Sounds like you were pretty pre-cooked, pre-tenderized, predisposed to be a screw it. Let's do it before you got on the call. I was an easy sell. What did you hear? What did you feel 
What did you see on the call that confirmed perhaps what you already knew you needed to do before you got on the call such that it made an easy yes for you? Um, I think just, uh, you know, like, like you say, you gotta, uh, uh, all, uh, all, what is it? All carrot? No. What's your, what's your line about the, all cheese, all, no whiskers. All, all cheese, no whiskers. Right? <laughs> um, so there's no, there's no magic recipe that's coming out in that call to like, be like, Oh, go do this. Right. Um, it's, it's about, uh, you know, learning the strategy and learning, um, the, you know, your, your kind of recipe for success. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's what I wanted to hear. You know, um, I knew that I wasn't going to get, get, uh, you know, all the ingredients on that call, but, um, but it was the right amount of, um, kind of inspiration that like, Hey, don't worry about the market. Like there's, there's a solution out here. Like what I say to people, um, now, uh, when I talk to, realtors or mortgage agents or anybody is like, you know, a bigger net, more fish, right. Or, or better bait, more fish. Right. Yes. And so, and so really kind of understanding that because so many people get wrapped up in the negativity, right. Of, of just, Oh, well the market's down. So I might be down. Well, if you do 10 or 20 deals a month, you're, you're fine. And, uh, and that's, you know, that would put you at the top 1% in pretty much ev every super broker in, in the country. Um, and there's definitely more than 10 or 20 deals happening in your area, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if there's not, then just expand your area. Um, Correct. so, so you just got a, you know, bigger net, bigger net, more fish. So, so that, th that call was, it, 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 you know, caught my attention in that, um, I just needed to change my strategy. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't necessarily the market. It was, just, it was my marketing. So you said, screw it, let's do it. You pulled the trigger. Yep. You took the leap. You jumped into the deep end. All in is the only way to win. Mm -hmm. You dove into the modules. You showed up to the Q and a calls. You started to attack the marketing plan and the mindset what was the first thing that we got you to do that perhaps got you feeling maybe a little skeptical or a little like, are you serious? You got to be kidding me. You really get me to do this. Like you really think that's going to work. What was that thing that had you maybe a little bit trepidatious or skeptical at first? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I really wanted to, to do everything. Right. Um, and so, you know, the cold showers. Which, uh, <laughs> what you telling me, we get people to take cold showers. What kind of massive masochist program is this? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and I started in December, you know, and I live in the country. So, uh, my water, my water is real cold. Oh yeah. Um, in the cold white yeah. North in Canada it comes out in yeah. chunks, especially in the winter. Right. So, um, uh, so that was, you know, physically a little bit, uh, a little bit intense. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to do the whole, like, like leading up to that, that level of, I don't want to eat, like say depression, but like, but, but anxiety and stuff is, it, it takes over, right? So it takes over your ability to exercise and do all sorts of other stuff. So I wasn't like being super healthy. I wasn't doing it. Like I was losing in every, in, in all, in all the facets. So I wanted it's amazing to how that spiral effect happens. Hey, totally, yeah. starts with just the one aspect of your life. Next thing you know, you're losing your mojo, your confidence, your swagger factor. You lose your pep yeah. in your step, sparkle in your eye. You lose your sleep. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're not exercising. You're not eating right. And it just spirals into your relationships. Yeah. So it's so interesting how that works. So I, so I, you know, uh, I really tried and I still like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a forever battle, even though you like make it part of your plan. It's tough to, it's tough to achieve it every day, but I try to do, you know, my, my magic morning routine and, you know, try to get a workout in, in, in the morning before I start my day, I try to do the cold shower, try to do all of those things to really set myself up for success. And I still like, I believe in that. Um, and I, and I, uh, you know, my perfect week, I, I can, I can do that every day and I feel amazing. Um, and I'm more successful that week too. Right? Mm, um, interesting. Uh, but, but then the other thing was my first call, uh, you know, I'd done like two or three modules. I didn't really know what I was talking about. Um, I didn't even really know what I was offering yet. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Just like, screw it. Let's do it. Like ready, fire, aim. Some guy. 
and he was a total asshole part. I don't know. <laughs> uh, he was just like, well, what are you going to like, what are you going to, what are you offering me? Like, and, and I was, you know, pretty quickly, like, I don't want to deal with this guy anyway, but, but I, you know, I've probably been in the business longer than that person. And probably at the time do more business than him as well. It's not like I was a newbie or anything like that. Um, but, uh, but I didn't have the, the mojo or the, and, and, and the confidence to go into that call at all. But you know, that's like, that's how you learn. Right. So I did more of those and, and I got, uh, you know, I booked some meetings with people and, and then, uh, and it slowly kind of grew from there. And now I feel like, like I could call, like I've, I've been now calling some of the biggest agents in Ontario, um, uh, you know, top 1% of 1% of, of, of agents. And, um, and, and I have no problem making that call and, and kind of knowing my value and knowing my worth and, and, um, and, and, you know, booking a meeting with those, with those people, if it's, if it's the right fit for me, right. Like that's, right. The, that's the other side of it. So, um, so yeah, like, uh, in the beginning it was, it was trepidation and fear of, of all the new things. Right. But yeah. Uh, Overwhelm, confusion, the fear of the unknown, yeah. the stretch out of your comfort zone, yeah. the challenge to get comfortable being uncomfortable, yeah. the cold showers, shrinkage is real, right? The dudes in the house know what we talk about. I, shrinkage did, is real. I did an ice bath this week though. Right. Momentum. Yeah. Now you're yeah. like, Hey, enough with this child's play with it coming out of the tap. Now we're putting some ice cubes in this bad boy. Right. No more messing around. Like let's take right. it to the next level. But the vitality, the tingle factor, the chutzpa factor is next level. When you get into that crowd therapy, right? It's like, it is so powerful. It's great for your lymphatic system, your immune system, your cardiovascular system, you get out there, kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum and crush it system, all that, right? It's like, if you can take a cold shower or do a cold plunge, I mean, m reaching out to a top producing realtor, ain't no thing like a chicken wing. We eat that for breakfast, lunch, and freaking dinner, right? It's like next level mindset. So you've been building this momentum. That's one of the things that I love about how you've shown up, Colin, one of the reasons why you've been so successful is from day one, you've had a bias towards action mm -hmm. and you sought progress, not perfection. We all have some degree of perfectionism tendency. That's one of the places we tend to hide as human beings is we want to have it all perfect and polish up our perfect plans in the parking lot going nowhere, but that's no way to profit. We've got to move. You know, it's hard to steer a parked car. You, my friend have been moving, which is one of the reasons why we've been able to serve you to such a profound breakthrough. We're going to talk about that in a moment in terms of the outcomes and results you've got. But what I love is that you've been all in and committed from day one, showing up to the Q and a calls, emptying your cup so we can fill with your dream, taking on the challenge of the cold shower, right? That's not an easy thing. You got to be all in. You got to be really committed to doing that. That's the litmus test of commitment is being so committed that you're more committed to the outcome. You're more committed to conquering than you are coddling your comfort zone. And that yeah. is you to your core brother. So I want to honor you for that. And so here we are now, like, I guess it's been about almost a year, I guess about yeah. a year since you launched on planet prosper. Yeah. Obviously a significant increase in business. Tell us about the before and after. What was life like in your business before Planet Prosper? What were you doing in terms of units per month? What are you doing now? And what's the difference that you believe has made the biggest difference? So I would say, um, like, um, we, so September to April um, was, you know, definitely my slowest time in five, six years or something like that. Right. Um, when I, when, when I, when my database was a heck of a lot smaller, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, certainly slowest market that you've ever faced for sure. Exactly. Right. So, um, and, 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 you know, it takes some time to like, like uh, I started this in December, I made my first calls in, in December and then, you know, January, February, March are obviously like, like notoriously lower months. Um, uh, and, uh, but, um, but yeah, looking like standing on the diving board in, uh, in, on December 1st, like I, I, if I looked back at my pipeline back then, like of, you know, future deals, it was like nothing. Um, and, mm. uh, and then May to November, uh, is probably my biggest 
whether that's five months, um, uh, stretch, uh, like my most successful stretch that I've had ever, um, in your entire career, more than, than 2021, which was my best year. And so this year I'll probably get close to, um, my 2021. It's, I haven't looked at my own productivity versus my team cause I'm a broker. So I have agents that work for me too. Um, mm-hmm. but, and, and they're all, you know, down a bit this year. Um, but, uh, my own personal, uh, like volume and productivity would probably be close to that 2021 year, which is wow. interesting considering January, February, March, April, or, you know, no deal. doubt that's saying something in, in this yeah, market. I think in one of those months I had one deal closed, like, you know, um, I think my average in those months was, you know, two or three deals a month. And then now I'm, you know, back up over close to 10 with, but coming up to the December 2023 diving board and, and looking forward, like I've got like so much in the hopper right now, uh, like people shopping, people like, um, and I'm, I have three new uh, teams that I'm meeting with next week to, uh, to sign up for as, as um, referral sources. Um, I have, you know, so many different ideas and, and plans and uh, uh, like marketing strategies that like, I'm only like, you know, 10, 11 months into this. So, so uh, add another year and like next year yeah. guarantee will be my biggest year ever. Um, and, I feel your certainty, brother. I feel it. I know it. And, and I said to people like this year has been the most, like, you know, when you talk to people, anybody, when you're a mortgage broker, you work in this, in this industry right now, they're like, Oh, mm, how's, yeah so the market's down you know like you that must suck and i'm like the cringe this is my best year ever it's been my the most fun i've had by by a long shot like i'm so much more invigorated about my business than i was before Um, wow uh because marketing side is is fun you get to be creative you get to do you know try stuff out if it works it works it great if it doesn't you know you at least tried um and so I have so much more fun in my business wearing all these different hats as opposed to just, um, you know, just doing math and, and, and getting business that way. Um, so it's totally like transformed how I would, you know, do business in the future. And my growth trajectory is, is just, you know, like multiples of what it, what it was before. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, the looking forward now, like uh, I've always said, and I've always told my team this, like, you know, uh, this business, anything sales oriented is, is about karma, right? Um, so if you're, if you're doing, doing something, you might not get a deal from that meeting that you did, but it'll come from somewhere else. As long as you're, as long as you're spinning your wheels, it's kind of good seed. And so uh, I, I did a client appreciation event um, where I had a bunch of realtors and clients come out on uh, Wednesday night. I had four nice. people uh, come out and uh, for drinks oh. and snacks at this uh, local restaurant. It was great. Um, and uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I got five referrals each of those days. So I got 10, that. 10 leads in both of the, in those two days. Not to Don't mention, it. yeah, and I haven't kept track of the conversations I had at my event where people were like, I need to do this. And I was like, yeah, yeah well, we can talk about that. Um, so those aren't included in, 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 in my in my uh, metrics. It's gotta be someone that fills out an application. That's what, that's what counts. So that's so awesome. So yeah, like, you know, you're, uh, I, another thing I've always said is, uh, uh, my dad said this to me when I was younger, uh, when everybody else is busy being busy, get busy doing something else. And so, you know, for all the agents out there that are just busy, worried about the market and whatever, just put your head down and go like work in the other direction and, and things will come. Zig while everyone else is zagging. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. And there's so much energy rising in you, man. So cool to see. And I feel it. The inspiration is definitely real. You're a living, breathing embodiment of what we teach. One of the things we talk about here on Planet Prosper is all momentum without starts with momentum within. And we hear it. We see it in you. Your magic morning routine, your hour of power, your cold shower. Those are all inner momentum builders that have been the transformation of your root that has created transformation in your fruit. Yep. Right. If we don't transform the root, we're not going to transform the fruit. So you've grown from the inside out. It's been tremendous 
and really awesome to witness you blossoming and blooming into the badass that you are 100% called to be and capable of being. And you're just getting warmed up, which is the cool part. You're just scratching the surface of the surface. Tell us about some of the mechanics we've talked about the inner game of success a lot, the mindset talk about the difference that's made the difference that you feel has been most profound for you that has taken you from being on the struggle bus, sleepless nights, out of control, needing control, but being out of control, not knowing where that next deal is going to come from to being in this momentum place where it's like everyone else is cringing saying, I'm sorry, bad market. I feel for you. And you're like, Oh, best year ever. And next year is going to be even better than this. What's the difference that's made the difference. Do you think if you had to just choose one thing from a mechanic standpoint in your marketing, I would say, uh, like diversification, right? Like, Mm. um, having multiple streams of where, where deals can come from. Right. Mm. Um, So Mm -hmm. I didn't, like, I think I had a Google business account before, but I didn't care about that stuff. I wasn't, I was more of a negative person when it came to marketing because I just didn't want to do it. And so, and you didn't uh, need to, and I didn't yeah, need to throw hanging fruit. Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, but you know, buying into that sort of stuff, I didn't have a, you know, a business social media presence at all. Um, and I think a lot of people are focusing on that as a source to get them business, right? Like you see a lot of mortgage people and real estate agents just making TikToks all day about, you know, what they do. And, and if you're doing the right, if you're doing things right, I don't think you should have time for that. Um, uh, so, um, I'm now the number one reviewed, um, person in my area on Google that took, you know, the span of a month to, to, to get, to get to that level. Right. Like it doesn't That's awesome. just concentrate on it and, and, you know, push some past clients and stuff like that to, to give you some Google reviews. It, it doesn't take much. Right. And then having the, the systems in place that I got from you to request for reviews and to, and to, and to post to my social media. Um, I think, you know, between you, you, myself and Nadia, we like, I think our, what we have, what we're, what I'm posting now is, is valuable to the point that like it keeps me top of mind, looks professional, all that sort of stuff. But we know that like if you're writing you know, this much stuff on your on your Instagram, nobody's reading that. You know, if you're making a five minute mm-hmm. video on something, nobody's watching that. Um, it's mortgages; they're not that exciting. <laughs> so you know, but just little blurbs of information that they catch people. And so I would say I get you know, two or three, uh, leads a month off of just people finding me on Google. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. talk to a realtor and they search, like search for me on, on, on the internet. I'm the first thing that comes up. Um, and, and I, everything looks professional. So that's a check mark beside my name when it comes. Mm -hmm. You don't get ghosted. Exactly. Right. Um, so they check me out that way. They're like, Oh, look, he's active. He's doing that sort of stuff. Legit. Right. Um, and, uh, so those things, are your like baseline, right? That's your, you, you have to have that to look professional and to, and, and, and you'll get some leads in that. Like I've definitely, I had a a couple weeks that some guy just found me on LinkedIn because of my stuff's being posted on LinkedIn. He lives in Mississauga and I live in Eastern Ontario. No problem. Right. Um, uh, and I've gotten, uh, leads through Instagram and Facebook, just, you know, people, finding me through that, but I'm not, okay. I'm not spending any time of my own time on that really. Right. right. You're um, delegating it to a kick-ass team. Exactly. You, do, you do what you do best. You get the best to do all the rest. Exactly. So you do that, that needs to be there. Right. But that can't be something that you're spending an hour a day working on. That's a total waste of your time. No. Um, and so get, so for a new person that's, you know, never done a mortgage before you can go and do that. Right. You can go and get some friends to, do Google reviews for you and stuff like that. And, yeah. and, and get a social media presence, have it there for a couple of weeks and then start making the calls, building the relationships. Um, you know, same with, you know, putting your name in flyers or being on the, uh, cover of those like tote bags or whatever that the grocery store hangs out. All that's all that sort of stuff is, is great. In addition to you making making calls and, and building relationships with people. Right. 
Um, so I think diversification with like with strategy is 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 the best thing because it's not just going to all come from you know your database or from realtors or from it's gotta it's gotta yeah. be you've got to kind of tick all the boxes right um so and yeah. but the social media side and the, and the actual you know online or paper marketing side is that part's that part's easy and you shouldn't be spending that much time on it yeah, you nailed a 100%. And those who were sitting on the one-legged stool with refis, with an over-reliance on refis, when this market shifted, know how important it is to diversify mm -hmm. through intimate kicking in the nuts or the ovaries with losing 50, 60, 70% of their business almost overnight. Yeah. So building stability through diversification, mission critical. And that's mm -hmm. why we help our clients diversify on so many different streams. Yeah. Reputation management. Google reviews, database marketing, realtor attraction, not just one realtor, but a stable of seven to 12, not low producers, because they're going to be driving Uber when the storm hits. The top dogs, they take market share. Those are the ones we want to anchor our business to, because those are the ones who have the most amount of buyers, the most amount of clout, the most amount of influence. So let's talk about that for a moment. Let's talk RAC, realtor mm -hmm. attraction campaign for a moment. Yeah. How many, how many realtors have you loaded so far into your RAC and how many appointments do you think you've booked approximately and how many new partners, VIP partners, top producing realtor partners do you think you've attracted since all this started? Uh, so I would say I, I've done two, I, I did three rack campaigns. Um, the first one, um, I would say, I, let's say I put 50 or a hundred realtors in there and mm -hmm. I would say that yielded five, um, like VIP partners, which then some of those, you know, cream rise to the top and some, like some people just aren't good at referring. Some people, uh, you know, are, are, are not doing enough business in this market either. So, so mm -hmm. their business is down. So, um, uh, and then, and then I've done, uh, it's from that. I got a few referrals for other agents from the agents nice. that I work with. Gotta love it when that happens. Like I, uh, one of my, uh, one of the first agents that I signed up, uh, said I should reach out to this, um, lady who has a team that they did in, I think in 2021, they did 500 deals. They do Whoa, on average, like got the whale. 400 deals a year, uh, as a team. And I, um, it, it took some time, like, you know, going back and forth. But, mm -hmm. um, by the time I went into her, to their office, she was already sold and, and I, I had her on my, on my email list and she already was kind of seeing my praises. And so now I say, and that, that was just in probably August or September, um, mm -hmm. that I went into their office. And now I would say I get two, two referrals a week out of that office right now. Um, wow. uh, and then, uh, and I have other teams that I work with that are, you know, doing really well. They're focused on marketing. They're, they're good, you know, nice young people that are active ambitious. business ambitious and you know getting like at least one to two leads a week from per team uh for some of those teams um and then i have meetings with i've i work with two of the biggest agents in the in the gta in toronto um to like top one percent or one percent um uh team uh, teams there um, nice and then i have meetings with uh two teams next week that are you know similar productivity um uh the actually the biggest agent in my area um uh that is requested that i come in and uh and meet his team so um that's awesome so of like let's say 150 um uh people that i put into a rack into multiple rack campaigns i would say i'm getting close to um including some of the people that i'm like meeting with in the next couple of weeks, like closer to 12, 15, um, uh, what, like we would consider VIP partners. And, yeah. and now I got to kind of start to comb through that and, 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 you know, see who uh, focus on the top people and, and yeah. not necessarily cut off people, but, but make sure that I'm given all, given my all to the top people and then add, add to that. Um, Absolutely. But, but it's, you know, once you get the, the stra understand the strategy right and understand you know what your what your value proposition truly is um then going into those meetings talking to anybody i 
I had this conversation with one of my agents the other day that he said, um, you know, I call, I I've been calling new agents, but they all say they have someone in their office. And I'm like, every team I work with has a broker that works in their office. Like that, that doesn't matter at all. You know? Right. Um, yeah. That's nothing. So, that's just smoke screen. Yeah. So that's, you know, the, all of those hurdles are just not, they're, they're so easy to get over once you really understand your value proposition and what you're, what you're offering. And that's, what's great. You know, you're a broker owner, so you're not only able to become the hero and win yourself, you can make heroes and help your team win as well. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, any of you broker owners in the house or sales managers, truth be told, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, once you're in that leadership position, your people are going to do double what you do wrong and half of what you do right. Yeah. So if you don't lead by example, good luck leading the tribe to the promised land. If you're not leading by example, doing it yourself. Yeah. So mad props and kudos to you, my man, for leading by example, the way true leaders do. That's huge inspiration in and of itself. Tell us, speaking of inspiration, tell us about your t-shirt. It says buyer's market. Tell us yeah. about the mindset behind that. Well, uh, I mean, I had, I had 50 t-shirts made for my, uh, for my VIP partners and I gave them out at my, um, at my, uh, party the other night and, um, you know, it's a, it's a good, good opportunity to go drop off some gifts and things for your agents. But, uh, one of the things that I'm talking about more, uh, in emails to realtors and in my marketing is that like, this is what a buyer's market looks like. You know, the, uh, the train is that we're very, very rarely in a balanced market. So the train's either moving towards you or it's moving away from you. And yeah. people have been chasing after homes in a, in a seller's market for so long. And, you know, it, most of, of the market, we've just tipped over into what's technically considered a buyer's market. And I think it's important that, you know, over the last 10 years, I've talked to so many people that are like, ah, I'm waiting, you know, like it's too, like uh, it's a seller's market, I'm waiting, or even in the last year, like I'm waiting for rates to come down, I'm waiting for this now is is the time right like you you have to if um if you're in a buyer's market it probably means things don't look pretty right <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's not going to be that prices are coming down interest rates are coming down and there's lots of inventory on the market because there's tons of sellers those three things aren't going to happen at the same time right so we saw it last spring any little blip in interest rates and and we're going to split back over into a seller's market pretty quickly. So we need to take advantage now. So I'm, you know, helping my realtors in, in pushing that narrative along by providing some, uh, some, uh, entertaining marketing materials. So. I love it. And again, that's a great example of leadership, inspired leadership, because your realtors, whether you guys know it or not, they're human beings and they have the same innate trait that all human beings have. And that is we're all desperately begging to be led, to have leadership and light and leadership that sees vision beyond the current circumstance. It's like the yeah. late, it's like the great one Gretzky. He said his secret to success is not seeing where the puck is, but predicting where it's going. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you're talking about is predicting where it's going and rallying the troops behind the vision of where it's going. So you're preemptive and proactive versus lagging egg, edge and trailing edge and bleeding edge, you're cutting edge. And that's a, a big part of what leadership is casting that vision and predicting what's coming next. Yeah. So for those of you who are watching this and you're like, wow, I had no idea that such a slow market could incubate this kind of inspiration. I thought I just had to play the victim to the market. I had no idea I could own my market instead of being owned by the market. And what a novel concept, right? To be in control, to be in the driver's seat. And you saw the juxtaposition of the dark place that Colin was in that perhaps you can relate to more than most right now, where you just feel like you're still in that darkness and you don't know how to get out and you don't feel a sense of control and you do have fear and anxiety, worry, and you're loving what you're hearing on the other side of Colin launching on planet prosper and finding not only hope, but finding real tools and real strategy and real routines and rituals that are creating incredible momentum in his business, you know, to go from three, four deals a month to 10 plus deals a month in the matter of six months is tremendous growth, especially in this kind of market. I'm sure you guys would concur. So if you're listening to this and you're like, Dorn, I need me some of that light. 
that you and Colin are spitting right now that you're shining. I'm still in the darkness and I'm sick and tired of being in the darkness. I'm sick and tired of worrying where that next deal is going to come from. I'm sick and tired of being a victim to the market. And you're in that place where you know you need to find a solution and your best efforts are coming up short. If that's the case, I want to invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call, just like the call that started the journey of transformation for Colin. You get to start in the same spot. And what we'll do is you'll get on the phone with me and one of my consultants. We lift up the hood on your business. We look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to take your business. And if we're the right fit, the right synergy to help you create a breakthrough, we'll show you what that looks like. If we're not, we'll be honest and say, you know what? Recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, you'll leave that call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, Go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply forward slash apply mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And the reason why it's forward slash apply is because we're having a conversation where you're applying for an opportunity to work with us. We don't know if we're the right fit. So let's have a conversation. Let's see if we have the right synergy. If we do, then we'll show you the pathway to the promised land like we did with Colin. If we're not a good fit, we're going to bring you clarity and we're going to bring value regardless. All right. So that's how that works for those of you who are ready to take that step. Colin, any last words before we sign off today? Everybody else is busy being busy. Get busy doing something else. I love it. And if someone's on the fence, they're like, Doran, I don't have enough money. I can't afford coaching. Uh, or they're like, I've tried coaching before. It didn't work. Or I tried coaching and it hit the point of diminishing returns. And it's like, you know, I'm a little bit skeptical on the fence. I don't know if I'm ready for that. I'm not ready. To, I don't know if I'm ready to take the leap. What would you t say to someone like that who knows they need to make a change? They've tried all these different things, they're not working, and yet they're still a little on the fence and holding back. What would you say to someone like that? Uh, I would say this is like a much more specific coaching than like, you know, someone that's gone and spoken to like a life coach or something like that. Um, uh, the tools and the ideas and the strategies are very specific to like our industry and the needs of, a, of, of an agent. And it's, it's kind of like the baseline recipe and you get to add your own flair to, to, to make it suit you. Right. Um, so it's not to say that you, uh, that exact you, I mean, I think you should basically follow Doran's scripts and examples and stuff like that. I, I go through the stage sometime where I'm like, Oh, I'm going to change this a bit. And then I'm like, and then I just end up back at the original script and that's, and that's what works. But it, but, but that script works because also of the, um, you know, my image that I have on, on social media and on, and if you Google me or whatever, um, it's backed by that. Right. So it's not mm -hmm. just a script and then you can't find me. It's a script and I'm the first one that comes up. And right. uh, so it, it's all got to go together. But I think, um, that, you know, the, the ideas and the tools and the, the, um, strategies are what anybody I, I what anybody needs to take them to the next level. Um, and I don't, I, I don't talk to any realtors who, uh, have heard of anything that I'm talking about. And everyone that I, um, that I meet with is pretty much like, it's, it's, it's me deciding that I want to, I want to move forward with, with them. Um, cause you know, some people I don't get the right feel from and I'm, you know, they, they can refer me business if they want. That's, that's fine, but I'm not going to focus on them. Um, you really flip the script as to who's adding value to who. Um, and, and that's, that's control. That's the yes. control that, we're all, that we're all after. Um, so, so I think it's, I think that anybody can gain, uh, value and add some, uh, some control to their business by using these tools. So. Well said, brother. The big C control. Mm -hmm. There's other C's too that come with that, right? Certainty, confidence. Totally. And when you have those big C's of certainty, confidence and control, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful, brother, to be in your corner on your team, to be perhaps just a small part of the recipe, the blueprint that 
allowed you to get more control, more certainty, more confidence in your life, and certainly more cash in your bank. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink. You, my friend, are a thirsty horse. (laughs) So I appreciate working with you. Uh, It's always a joy to see how you're growing, expanding, and winning. I love seeing you win. And like I said before, we're just scratching the surface of the surface, brother. We haven't seen, you you haven't seen nothing yet. We're just getting started. I can't wait. Awesome, brother. Appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you for being the advocate for the listener. You know, your, uh, your peers in the industry who really need a lot of inspiration and encouragement right now. So thank you on their behalf for being light in the darkness for them, being a beacon of light for them in such a dark time uh, that, you know, is much needed to have leaders and beacons like you to shine the light. So thank you, brother, for your light and uh, keep shining a bright. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, guys. This is the one and only Colin Shea that we've been sharing with you guys today with his journey, how he doubled his business over the last year in the slowest market of his career and how you can do likewise. If you want to learn more about the secret sauce behind how he went stratospheric in such a challenging market, go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. My name is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast, and we will see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all. Thanks for hanging with us. Bye, everyone. Thanks for being with us.